I'm going to cover the uh, syllabus a little bit first. So, welcome to NRGY 242. This is fall 2014. Gosh, I always have some kind of weird hair day, I guess, but it's okay. Um, let's get into the shell. Fall 2014. Let's look at the syllabus. Okay, so obviously the meeting times need, need a little update. I just kind of held that over from what we were doing doing last year. So a uh, little bit of history on the course. When, when the, when the uh, Energy Tech program first started, there was um, this course also had a little bit of PV in it. But as, as, you'll, as you well know, we have a full course on PV installations. So there is no photovoltaic anything in this course at all. It's solar thermal, which is you know really about as fundamental as it gets in terms of in terms of the physics of how the, the sun uh, sun's energy hits the planet and turns into heat. The whole point of the energy tech is to take that heat and do something useful. And in my conversations with my various colleagues around town, it looks more and more like the like the definition of of um, re like renewable anything is just turning waste into something th that's useful. So, for example, you know, a bunch of photons hitting the desert in the middle of summer is, in a lot of people's mind, a waste. So why not put your solar thermal in there, heat your water, take a shower, boil some water, clean your dishes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, really, what we're doing is just taking what would have been considered waste heat bouncing off a building, keeping some guy's grass green, uh, you know, cooking the asphalt, and turning that into uh, a service, into some kind of utility, like I said, heating water, um, heating air, just, just, just moving heat around, but otherwise it would not be used. It would just sort of tri trickle out into nature. Um, the wind systems, too, you know, why is solar thermal and wind in the same class? Well, if it wasn't, we, we, there'd be two classes and we could dive deeper into one or the other, but the program's just not that big. Um, yeah, so okay. <laughs> we, we, we'd have classes even smaller than this that we guys would get, of course, with both. So what, um, what we'll see, though, is, you know, wind power fundamentally is just solar thermal. We'll look, we'll look a little bit at some of the physics and, and as to why that happens, but basically when, when um, air gets hot, the molecules themselves move faster. They, they, they bounce around, so more of the energy goes into um, making them have higher velocities. That higher velocity pushes them apart, makes the air less dense. It's now hot, hot air rises, cold air comes in, and there's your wind, basically. So, so that's the... You know, the way I justify in my mind for having solar thermal and, and wind in the same class is physically they're, they're a similar phenomena. Um, technologically, very different, right? You know, with, with, your, um, with, with your solar thermal, like I just said, you're, you're, you're taking those, those photons, letting them turn into, what's, what's, the, um, what's the thermal equivalent of a, so, so blank is the, is the thermal energy as photon is to light energy. What's the fundamental particle of heat? It sounds a lot like photon. Right. No. What'd you say? No. No. Proton? Proton? That's not a bad guess, but uh, what's that? Uh -huh. it's, yeah, it's phonon. So the, the, the fundamental unit of thermal energy is the phonon. What the heck is a phonon? Well, it's, it's just a, a vibrational unit. So you might think of it a little bit like, um, okay, you're sitting next to somebody in class, and you're like, that person just bumped my leg. Uh, no, I'm not sure. So it's the, it's the quantum threshold at which vibrations pass between different particles. We're not going to get too deeply into the physics, but um, everything's vibrating all the time. You know, every single bit of matter that we interact with is um, 
unless it's at absolute zero, and we know from the third law that's not possible, is always moving a little bit. So the, so the phonon is the fundamental vibrational unit of energy. And basically what's happened, and we, we roughly know what photons are, right? So it's, the, it's the energy that's allowing us to see, right? It's your retina, uh, bounces an electron up into a shell. In, in, at, the, at the fundamental level, though, I don't know if I can, yeah, I'm not going to mess with it, so let's keep talking. At the fundamental level, though, when, it, when that photon comes in, it's going to do one of three things. And what, what are the three things the photon can do when it, when it interacts with matter? It can pass through. So that's called transmission. Reflection and refraction. It can reflect. So it can bounce off. So it can go through. It can bounce off or be absorbed. Those are the only three logical things it can do. Um, go right through it, come back, or stay in, inside it. And so typically what you want to do in your solar thermal is have as much of it be absorbed as possible. That's why uh, the solar thermal collectors we see are black. Black um, absorbs all, all wavelengths. Uh, okay, so that's, um, that's that. On the conversion from photons to phonons and the justification for wind. Okay, so that's just a little bit of physics. And um, another thing we're going to hit a bunch is this solar constant. So you probably used it already in 243 PV. Uh, same thing applies for, um, for solar thermal. What's one advantage you might think about, though, on a solar thermal panel efficiency versus a photovoltaic panel efficiency. You, you probably, I've beat you over the head a million times with 1,000 watts per square meter, but now that you know that, what's one advantage you might see based on the three fundamental modes I talked about in terms of what radiation would do that a solar thermal system might have over a photovoltaic in terms of efficiency? Well, it can reflect back into where you have it black, so your pipes or whatever that are absorbing the the energy. You can also have like a meter that refracts that into it, rather than you have a flat surface for PV. Sure. Why Why would I just put a mirror to, on my PV though too? The PV is going to turn uh, solar into electricity. Yeah. And it loses efficiency once it gets above a certain temperature. Your PV. That's, yeah. So there's a couple things. Yes. Yeah, couple. Things. The, the one thing I was thinking of is that typically the, in the PV panel, so you, you, your, your silicon is doped with either boron or phosphorus or something like that. There's a lot of other, that's, that's kind of your conventional. And those silicon atoms are only sensitive to a certain bandwidth of the electromagnetic spectrum. So the sun, and we'll, we can dive, we'll dive into this in more, you know, the, the sun is emitting over this, this large, much larger bandwidth. The PV is only going to pick up that one little bit. Like I said, if you get your, your surface painted black, it's going to be absorbing all of these frequencies. So there's um, an advantage in efficiency. The other one, another good point, it's almost like the hotter your solar thermal gets, the more efficient it is. Where the opposite is true, in your, in your PV system, as these resistors get hotter, their resistivity goes up and the efficiency goes down. So yeah, it's another, another good one too. So it's one advantage we have this solar thermal. Or a couple of advantages. Um, apply the laws of thermodynamics to solar thermal and or wind systems. You guys remember the three laws? What's that? Can't win. What's and what's what's which law is that? One's good. Yep. And that's the can't break even. That's the second one. Well, that, uh, you, you, you can't break even as entropy, okay. because entropy is always going to yeah. increase. It's always going to come back, make more of itself. So you, you can't win, can't break even. Is it the little goblin one? That's, that's, that's also the second one. But there, it's, rela it's related to the third. It's related to the third. The third is you can't stop playing. And by the third, you can't stop playing means you can never hit absolute zero. Like I said at the beginning, 
things are always vibrating. You know, as soon as you think you've got this one little cordoned off, neat, tidy chunk of space with nothing happening, something smacks it from somewhere else. So you can get rid of absolute zero. So those are the three laws. Um, factors that affect solar and wind output, we've already talked a little bit about that, just the, the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, wind output is going to come down to the design of your turbine. The one we have out here on the trailer is a horizontal axis, kind of a mini version of what you see in the big wind farms. A lot of times in, in more urban settings, we'll see these uh, vertical axis turbines. And in fact, there is one here in town. There's a rogue, sustainable hippie living somewhere up in the rattlesnake. Yeah. Can't imagine here with Rick. <laughs> Who has a vertical? It's not me. Who has a, <laughs> who has a vertical axis turbine? So we'll, we'll go check his out as, as well. He wants to be involved in the program. Um, evaluate solar resources on a site-specific basis. Uh, if you've taken 243, you've probably already seen the Solar Pathfinder. We can bust that thing out this, for this course as well. Um, wind resources on a site-specific basis. There are nationally published databases. NASA keeps some of them. Um, NOAA keeps some of them. Uh, there are also a lot of factors that come into play for microclimate. So, you know, the, the, these, um, these big, bigger maps are going to be able to tell you if wind's blowing up or down the rattlesnake at the moment or, you know, what's happening down the Bitterroot in somebody's backyard. So, uh, we have a couple anemometers and we can break those out over the course of the semester too for, for doing um, wind site analysis. Uh, thermal load analysis. There's a couple different ways to think about this. One, and there's, well, there's a lot of different ways to think about it, uh, and we'll get into in the book here, but one is uh, a way to manage the heat that's hitting a building. So we humans have sort of evolved ourselves into a corner where we know a lot, where we need to live in buildings, right? We don't we don't have body hair, or enough of it, to run around naked like our chimpanzee relatives. Um, we have to wear clothes, we need to sleep in beds, we need to take showers. So um, one way to think of this thermal load analysis is you know, how far out of thermodynamic equilibrium does your house need to be in order for you to be comfortable? So on a day like today, nothing, doesn't matter. You can have the doors open, windows wide open. Your, the, the air in your house is in thermodynamic equilibrium with the rest of the environment. Come February, not so much. <laughs> you know, come 100 degree day in the middle of July, not so much either. So there, you're, you're always um, fighting heat in some, well, not always, but in general. Um, if, yeah, just about, I mean, there, there's really nowhere on the planet left that you're not gonna, that, that people don't live indoors. New Guinea, the Amazon, I don't know, but... I mean, you know, like, uh, so, like, we could say a little less than a billion. Because, like, you know, like a billion people live in poverty. Yeah. In poverty, yeah. Poverty, so, so. So, that, so that's part of the, the thermal order. Like, we, we need to condition our air to be our civilized selves. Um, the other, the other part of that thermal load analysis is knowing um, how much hot water, so, so for example, a residence is going to use for showering, for cooking, bathing, etc. cetera. Um, this class, we don't get too much into the industrial settings, uh, but you know, the, 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 the uh, heat transfer coefficient and then the thermal capacity coefficients for water aren't going to change. And they're they're going to be the same. So we'll get to know those numbers very well by the end of the semester. Um, describe, specify, and cite equipment appropriately. We'll, we'll get a lot of good hands-on um, with our own trailer here and a couple of other things that we're going to do in terms of this, this objective is there's a, there's a, a first-year gal, any of you know um, Shelly Mitchell? Anyway, she's a first-year student lives down the Bitterroot, you know, and really has embraced um, sustainable living. She's trying to, like, get off the grid, right? And, and so 
she would like to build her own solar thermal system. She's got the materials together, but not quite the, the full on construction know-how to, to pull the trigger on. So we're going to go down and help her with that. There's another guy you might remember by the name of Kevin Dupuis. He came and did his biofuel truck a couple years ago, pulled up during, during the practicum. He is trying to start his own renewable energy school in Missoula. And so, you know, rather and, and so rather than like try to compete with him for students, I'm not sure how he's going to get accredited. Maybe he's at, are you at college? Are you at high school? I mean, what exactly are you over here, Kevin? Um, we're going to we're going to partner with him, and he, he's very um, excited about the partnership. So they've got some space, and I think they want to do something similar. Kind of just take it off grid a little bit, uh, rely less on utilities. So we'll um, we'll see what he's got going out tonight. So the whole school will be a learning. Uh, yeah, you know, and there, there have been colleges that pull. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Olin College, but engineering school in Massachusetts, and um, the first couple of years, the students built the school. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was yeah. That well, sounds pretty cool because then, like, if it's in Missoula, you can literally just go there and like, oh, this is what solar thermal is, and then you basically have like printed out sheets and stuff. That'd yeah. be the most useful. Yeah. Well, um, what, what, what's probably more likely is um, probably not. We, we might, what we probably have more is um, Kevin would come in and give a little song and dance about what he wants. We put a game plan together during our hour and a half. And then we say, okay, guys, the, the extra six hours that you're going to spend outside of class, we're going to spend over at Kevin's joint on, on Friday. Um, for the Will Stallmans and the purely online guys, they're going to have their own projects. But what I thought I'd do with the, with the Missoula students, rather than, you know, you're, you're building your little gadget in your backyard, you're doing something in your attic, you know, I thought we would just kind of team up and, and probably knock some of these bigger projects out a lot quicker than dragging your, your project on throughout the semester. Like one of the Thursdays or something. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll figure a schedule out. But I, I'd I'd like and, I, and I'd like to I'd like to you know get some pictures, put that on the website. And I think cause a lot of times you know a lot of people in town still don't even know that we're here. You know, I, I think most of them know there's a culinary school and that. I but think I might Google something for PR, public relations. But yeah, you know. You're talking about me. <laughs> 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 I don't. I don't need to respond to that. <laughs> All right. Um, estimate estimate energy output and cost. Um, so obviously here, you know, we're going to turn megajoules and kilowatts into dollars and cents. That's that's what that is. Um, use the tools of the plumbing and electrical trades using safe work practices. That's our hands on. Um, identify at least six, 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 six local installers of solar thermal or wind systems. Um, and then here's the, the, the next few. Um, the passive house build, this, what's that? Oh, yeah, 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 there, there's several. So it, they're, they're out there. Um, Passive house is something that Zandi Sievers has, has, has been um, uh, a big proponent of. If something comes up with him, we'll, we'll work with him a little bit. Um, we kind of already have our um, solar trailer. I don't know, maybe we, we pop some hot water in it too? We got, we got time to think about a kind of Missoula College project. Uh, I've got Tim Chester's old solar thermal sitting in my backyard. I've been going back and forth with my wife about maybe just popping it on my house. So it's always good to go and screw up somebody else's house first before you, you know, do your own. We can put it on the trailer with some quick disconnects. Keep her warm in there in the winter. I don't, yeah, I don't mind that. Um, design, build, and test a wind system. And so it'll be one or the other, and, and uh, or both. I, I'd, I'd like to just go and, and do it, but, uh, and in fact, I forgot to bring it, but on the, um, 
on the 20th, and the timing's not the best for a couple reasons. One, September 20th is pretty early in the semester, but, and it's also has to be the day of the um, Renewable Energy Fair down in Karras Park that NCAT and MREA are putting on. But what I'd like to do is go and, and participate uh, to improve our PR of the community, which apparently we're lacking in. Um, go and participate over at the um, Home Resource. They've got this um, construction competition. Have you guys seen this before? It's, uh, so every year they, they put it on and you, you assemble a team. I think you have a team of, of up to five and you got six hours to build something kick ass that blows everyone away because you're like, how the hell you build that in six hours? So I think if, if we plan properly, um, Tim Chester is going to TA this. So maybe what we do is for you guys and then maybe me and Tim tag team over there and a little wind turbine, you know, functioning wind turbine in the afternoon. I mean, we'd be kind of boots on the ground, shovel ready going in, um, bringing a few of our own gadgets to use whatever they have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but I almost like the majority of the materials have to you have to scrounge on site. Okay. Yeah, and if you look, um, this wind power workshop with Pigot text, you'll 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 see students just. And if you look uh, like page 62, for example, I can show it. I'll just flash this up online for the guys who are listening in. You know, there's somebody carving a wind turbine blade out of a laminated piece of, piece of wood uh, by hand with a chisel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can weld. Yeah. But. Anyway, we come up with some little plan where we, we go over there and, and, and knock out a turbine. You know, see, see if they've got, some, you know, do a little shopping around ahead of time, see if they've got a, a generator. Or even, I was even thinking doing something kind of kind of artsy. So you take an old junk um, floor fan, spin that thing backwards, charge a little battery, and, and light up some LEDs. And maybe, you, maybe you've got some kind of dangling artwork looking thing that okay so you're not you're not like powering your house but the fan spins we artsy it up somehow I don't know put put a grizz grizz claw on it or you know, some kind of Azula logo we'll ponder it right. you know that's so just just something kind of catchy and then you know it sits there and spins it, it moves it works charges the battery it's got a photo diode on it and maybe it, it, it lights up at night so it's something you might hang as a privacy screen in the back kinetic sculpture that's also energy tech. Just just brainstorming on that. Uh, what else? Uh, present data from, from project. So just like you guys, you know, like we've done in the practice in the past, you'll um, take some data, we'll have a report, center, go for it. So I think we're all here because we've got our Prereqs out of the way. This is one one of the two required books. And sorry, it was not there for you, Dustin. Um, if I've got a spare, I might have a spare in my office. If I do, I can I'll let you borrow it. Um, here's the other one. Pigot, and I was able to find a couple chapters of Pigot online. They don't match the hard copy exactly, so if I'm blabbing away about page 62 in Pigot and it's not there in your page 62, it's because you're looking at the online version. I've, I've got a, uh, in fact, I think it's right, uh, right here at the top, the Pigot text is, is there, 4.1 megabytes. Let me just let me just keep going through the syllabus here. Do you guys have to leave at um, four for class? Well, I'll just, I'll just skip and you want to go. Oh. Since it's only once. Oh, it's always on Okay. Yeah, I think well, hopefully Mark's doing a good job recording over there. Uh, so there, there's the one book. There's the second one. And then uh, this one's optional. It's, it's JAW. This is written more from a um, 
engineering perspective rather than from a, a technician's perspective. A lot of equations, a lot of typos. I'll, I'll dig a few things out of here, but I'm not expecting you to, to buy this book. Was it really? 150? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I put optional on there. That's my disclaimer, right? I, I put optional. Oh, okay. What's that? That started like last week. <laughs> Your Moodle show was open like last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading from the Moodle show right now. Yeah. Well, to get all the used ones, you know, they're never. What? I went there early, so I just Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we had the world. Yeah. Well, anyway, it, you know, it's it's not a bad book. I mean, I, 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 I did um, I did pick it out because it's, 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 it's a fine text. It's just... Um, it's optional. Does um does um doesn't it say there at the te in the in the bookstore optional versus required? Yeah. Oh, it does. Okay, good. So I did say optional. Uh, assignments, participation, exams and quizzes. So we um, any exams and quizzes that are coming out of these books, we'll, we'll cover in um, class ahead of time. And then the the class project. Um, still not exactly how to how to frame this thing, what, what we might end up doing, like say we're down at Shelly's house, um, I, you know, showing up to that's going to be part of this class project grade, you know, being there, helping out, um, taking pictures, documenting. It'd be really nice to like document the project in the same way that you have for your other courses, so then um, at the end, you got a little portfolio that can, you know, go out to the course, like, here's a project. Go towards your NABCEP certification. Uh, for the guys that are purely online, uh, the you're you're, you're going to be much more on your own doing your doing your own uh, solar thermal or wind. So this is similar to what I what I just said here. Yeah. Okay. So, project planning, solar resource, wind resource. Or do you guys want to um, just go tell uh, six tonight, or just want to want to pick it up tomorrow morning, assuming we can get a classroom? Because remember, we're, we're Thursdays at nine thirty. I don't care. I have a classroom. Okay. Um, what's that? Just just lop it off uh, this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, let's just do that. In fact, I feel like I've covered the syllabus, and that's really all I wanted to do this this first meeting. But uh, so you have a do it yourself um, kit on there. Is there one you specified? You go up with for, oh. For uh, required things in this. I'm just saying, like I didn't know what it meant when I read it, so I'm assuming. Oh, sorry. Where, where are you looking there, Ryan? Sorry, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Right there, do-it-yourself generator kit, um, additional resources. If, like, uh, so you said they have to do one of their own projects. I'm assuming that- Oh, 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 oh. Where that information, additional resources- Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I'll, let me, no, we've got, um, these are, these are things that we already have here. So, um, we have a 3D printer over at Montec, and we've got the manual for that. And um, we also, in the back of um, HBO6, we've already built that. Now I'm just saying for, for the people that are just online, you said they have to do a project. Yeah. Um, is that like additional, like, 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 uh, where you get the parts? Oh, sure. Well, one thing I, one thing I thought we'd do with for um, for Stallman, for example, Tim and I already kind of discussed a little bit, would be to have him, if, if you really want to do some real serious hands-on, 
would be to send us a, um, a CAD file of a small wind turbine. And this, this thing would just be, I'm thinking like a 50 watt job, you know, one, like about a square foot. He sends us the file. We print it here, mail it to him, and then um, he builds it up and takes some data. So yeah, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. You know, maybe Stallman has one design, Ernie Orr has another one. We, we print a few, send them out. And then we've got, um, we have enough funding right now with our two grants to, to buy supplies. You know, we, we, could, we could buy them, you know, better part of one of those things, copper wires, magnets, build, you know, wind up your own generator and go, so. Good on that. Did you hear that, Will? Will, talk to me. Talk to me. No, he's, he's working right now. So. <laughs> all right, that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, do, you, do you get the books? Uh, if you want to keep Jaw, that's great. If you want to sell it back, that's fine, too. Uh, a, a lot of the, the questions on the quizzes come straight out of the book. You know, so for example, I'm looking at figure 1.1 right now in Pigot, page 11. You see 100% wind coming in. You're losing at least 41% to Betts' law right off the bat. We can, we can cover that derivation in a little more detail. Because honestly, guys, I, I want you to graduate from this program and be able to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some engineer who thinks he knows everything in the freaking world, honestly. I mean, I, and so, and in an engineering class, they're going to they're gonna spend, you know, several hours, you know, going over the, the mathematical derivation of, of Betz's theorem. We'll cover it, and I, and, I, and I know the algebra and trig skills that you guys have, a little bit of calculus I teach you that we, we can figure that out. There's drag, you know, 21%, uh, 20% loss. Copper wires, you're losing in your in your resistance. You should know those equations by now. Rectifier, you're losing some there. Any, any component, you're just you're you're adding heat and resistance, and then the inverter too. So, but at the end of the day, you're you're just like any technology. Doesn't matter, coal fired power plant, nuclear, wind. There are losses along the way. So I might ask you, you know, according to Piggott, what's the average percent loss from the rectifier? Boom, twelve percent. If you flip, flip forward a little bit in, um, in PIG at page 78, you can see this coil set in resin to form a stator. We built one of these in the 2010, or sorry, 2011 practicum. You guys want to knock one of those out? We can. And, and honestly, I've been trying to, to fool around a little bit more with this whole notion of what's called the flipped classroom. I don't know. Have you guys heard that at all in any other classes? Have you heard this? Well, no, but really, it's it's rather than me standing up here. And, and sure, there's a few things I think you should know. Like I think you should know what that's is and how to discuss it intelligently. But there's also times where you come to the class. You're like, man, this is this is what I wanted to get out of the class. And so you you tell me what it is you want to know, and then we we you know we work together to make that happen. I don't already do that. What's that? I yeah, I mean that's what I've been trying to experiment with. You know, the media stuff here, blah 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 blah. I, I try to you know figure out what it is you guys want to do. You know, work in some three D printing, do a little more solar thermal, do do more wind, do more community. You know, I'm happy to come with it. So, so that's that's it for today. Let's just say um, nine thirty. Let's just let's just meet here at 9:30. Okay, I mean I'll I'll look for a classroom. You might see an email saying, "Hey, we're going to be in HB or HB 17 at 9:30." But let's just say for now, um, we'll meet here at 9:30. Probably the class, but we'll just figure out where to go from, from here. Then. All right. Thanks. <laughs>